Amos chapter 5. Amos chapter 5. We're talking to Israel, north. Joel talked to Israel, I mean Judah, south. Jeremiah just dealt with Judah. Israel, north, will go into captivity with the Assyrians, Nineveh. And Amos is like preparing them. Because they're not getting right. They're not repenting. You know what I believe the rapture is of the church? I don't think it's because, you know, God wants to be so close to us. I think the church gets like Judah. The church gets like Israel. We sin so much. Bring them home. You know, when my mom used to call my name all over Denison Avenue. When you heard Stanley William Hayward, it was not a rejoiceful time. The Bible says that, that God's going to call us by name. If you think you're such a great church, Revelation 3 has got other opinions. Judah thought it was so great. Jeremiah says, I've got a different story for you to tell. Israel thought they were so great. Amos says, no, hear the word. Hear this word, which I take up against you. Even a lamentation. Now, Jeremiah writes a lamentation. It's sorrow and pity and tears and what am I going to do? O house of Israel. The virgin of Israel is fallen. That means she was chaste. She was pure. She was acceptable in the eyes of God. The church today, if God had to find a virgin. Yeah, right. Israel got rid of her virginity by sleeping with the devil. Shacking up with, the, with Satan. Committed adultery and whoredom with idols and imagery. The same thing with the church. I call the Baptist Church the, the Baptist Catholic or the Catholic Baptist Church. Because the church is sleeping with Satan. And Jesus Christ is knocking on the door saying, will you come out of that mess? She shall no more rise. She's forsaken upon her land. She, none of us coming. She's going to captivity. And there is none to raise her up. She's gotten so far. It's not that, that God won't listen to her. It's not that God won't reach out to her. It's gotten to the point they won't repent. They won't listen to God. They got their own ways like the church. For thus saith the Lord God, the city that went out by a thousand shall leave a hundred. And that which went forth by a hundred shall leave ten to the house of Israel. And what's that? Your population is reduced. I'll tell you what the population is going to reduce in America. You're not going to get a population growth when babies are being killed. Sodomites, gay and lesbian, don't produce children. You don't get two male couples or two female couples. They don't make a baby. So as a nation, you lift up sodomy, gay, pride, February, and all that. Okay. You can do this experiment. Here's an experiment. Get yourself two islands or three. And have resources on the island that you can food, shelter, 
And on one of them islands put a male and a female. And no one else. That's it. Each island is far from, from other islands and, and country. Nowhere, in the middle of nowhere. On another island put two males. Disgusting. On the third island put two females. Disgusting. Give it ten years. Twenty years. Visit those islands. One of those islands are going to have children. And maybe children's children. So you got a population that's reducing. And we already read in chapter 4, I mean there's famine, death, war. People are dying. For thus saith the Lord unto the house of Israel, Seek ye me, and ye shall live. Now, that says to the house of Israel. That's one verse that we can also take as Gentiles and as the church. There are verses that are applicable. See, the Bible's written to the Israelites, the Jews. Or the Bible's written to the Gentiles. Or the Bible's work written to the church. Or the Bible's written to the world. When you are reading and studying the Bible, you guys say, who's it written for? And you say, this right here, it's written to Israel. But when you read the Pauline epistles to the church, it, it, it's seeking God. And when you obey God, that's light. Even John the Baptist says, John 3.36, He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. I can take that scripture and apply it to us and do no damage. When I go over to Malachi... I start saying, you know, as a church, we ought to be tithing and filling our store out You do injustice. When I'm in the United States of America and we get together to say, we're going to build Noah's Ark, you can't find that. And then you go to this Ark thing and then you flap down your, your, your cash or your your credit card and that's not in Genesis Noah did not have to pay to get onto the ark or any animal and if any man would have got which none did but but ate of him in his household but he didn't charge his wife his sons and his sons uh, wives Oh, look at the dinosaurs that I hear. Oh, in the name of Jesus, of course. You sucker Christian. But, seek not Bethel. Now, Bethel is the house of God. Bethel is, is where Jacob met God. But Bethel is the religious center of the golden calf. Of Jeroboam. Remember, Rehoboam and Jeroboam split the nation, Israel and Judah. And Jeroboam made two calves, put one in Bethel and put one in Bathsheba. And this is your pre Jesus Christ universal Catholic Church. Before there was a Catholic Church, along with the tribe of Dan in the book of Judges. This is the sin that goes throughout the life of Israel with the king. And he made Israel the sin, the sins of Jeroboam. And he made Israel the sin, the sin of Jeroboam. Those golden calves. It was an imitation, 
It was a replica Noah's Ark of the true God Jehovah worship that was going on in Jerusalem where God settled his name. Now remember the, the early chapter, go to Bethel and transgress. Well, that's what they were doing. You, you may be going to a church. Hey, I, I'm going to church. It's Sunday. I'm going to church. And it's no aspect of a biblical Bible church at all. It's a place of Satan worship. It's just not, you know, 666 and the, and the goat and mandis and all that. It's a worldly carnal. And a type of church like that is the mega church. I go to a mega church. I go to church where we got rock band and we just liven it up. And <laughs> I go to church, we can bring whatever Bible we want. We got one God, one Savior, one salvation, one one blood, one baptism, one group of people, but we got 36,000 Bibles. Right there tells you something's wrong. But we're not talking about that. And so what Amos 5, 5, death, 5 in the Bible is the number of death, is don't run to the religion. Nor enter Gilgal. Now Gilgal is where Joshua brought the children of Israel across the Jordan River. Don't go there. Because God did not establish Gilgal. And I would believe maybe they had some kind of center there, some kind of religious atmosphere, walk the footprints of Joshua, something. We chain off the areas and for, for money, you can see the rocks that Joshua That wasn't anything. And pass not to Beersheba. Now Beersheba is the other place of the golden calf. So Bethel, Gilgal, and Beersheba have something to do with those golden calves. Beersheba is the city all the way down as south you can get in Israel. A place that was established by Abraham and established by Isaac. And Girah. There's a well there. For Gilgal shall go into captivity, and they do, Israel north, and Bethel shall come to naught, nothing. Well, kind of, kind of bad because when Jacob cleaned up his life, he went back to Bethel. And before he went back to Bethel, he took off the earrings, he got rid of the idols, he got rid of the images. And years later, his children put two golden calves. Bethel literally means the house of God. Now you want me to step on your bare feet? With a jackhammer? You know a lot of churches call themselves the house of God. That prayer that opens the church thank you Lord for we are now in the house of God. Like there's no other house of God. Meanwhile Jeremiah said there's altars and there's houses of God all over the place in Jerusalem. And not one is doing right. Seek the Lord. Wait a minute. I thought Bethel. The golden calf. The golden calf. Where they crossed the Jordan River Gilgal. But verse 4 and verse, verse 6. They seek the Lord. You got the religion. You got the sacred place. You got the ark in America. And God says seek the Lord. But I went to the holy city. That's okay sir. Seek the Lord. 
I'm in a Baptist church in Jesus' name. Will you come out? If you come out, I'll dine with you and you and me. You see, we put our places of worship in holy. And God's up in heaven saying, baloney. And God hasn't been in that building in years. God hasn't got, that pastor may be even of Satan, 2 Corinthians 11. These priests, there are priests running around, but they're not the Levitical priests. There are feasts. We'll look at a couple, I think we talked about the feasts. Those are not the feasts of Jehovah written in the law. They are complete imitation made up by a man. And ye shall live. At least he break out like fire, our God's a consuming fire, in the house of Joseph. Ephraim and Manasseh. Ephraim was a bad condemnation in the book of Hosea. And God said, listen, you, you want something from me? Okay, fire! Proverbs says, fire says it's not enough. Fire would burn the whole world if it would and could. And if God sets the fire in the book of Revelation, you ain't putting it out. And devour it by the flame. And there be none to quench it in Bethlehem. God said, listen, I can just set the whole places on fire if you want me to. He did with Sodom and Gomorrah. And that's still not even an uninhabited city today. Ye who turn judgment to wormwood, leave off righteousness in the earth. Wormwood is a bitter kind of herb. They're not doing right. Look at verse 8. Seek again. They got the Israeli North tribe religion. And God says, seek me, seek me, seek me. I thought we had the religion. Yeah, you got religion, but you ain't got God. Seek him that make us the seven stars of Orion. We are now God saying, come to me, the creator. You know what they're doing? They're worshiping the stars and Orion. Your horoscopes are based upon the stars and the planets in alignment. You ever notice how the stars are given names by warriors and lions and tigers and bears? Oh my! I thank my lucky stars. The city of the stars, LA, Los Angeles. Los Angeles is the city of the angels. Sure ain't the heavenly angels. You can even put your footprint in that by that restaurant if you're famous enough. Want to be a star? When you wish upon a star. Why? Go to the creator of the star. And turn us the shadow of death into morning. And make it the day dark with night. And call for the waters of the sea. And pour them out upon the face of the earth. The creator. The creation by the creator. And the creator is the Lord is his name. It almost seems like Israel's given up on creation. Israel has maybe given up on creator. 
They have forsaken Genesis 1, as many religions today have. One of the dingbat popes quoted to Omni magazine, Genesis is a myth. In my outright commentary of Genesis, Genesis 1-1, I get into the religion and quote to you the authority of the major religions how for its evolution, it ain't creation anymore. And you're talking about the big name religions. Even the Baptists today will open up their newspaper to find a horoscope on the same page of the comic strip for the kiddies. Interesting. Sometimes the same page of the TV guy for that day. I thank my lucky stars. The Mickey Rat said, you know, when you wish upon a star. You know, stars are angels in the Bible, Revelation chapter 1. The fact is, when you're worshiping those stars, you're actually worshiping angels. Some of the third of the stars are going to fall. The, the, maybe some of those stars you're, you're worshiping are Satan's angels. I remember when I was working for the newspaper, and I, and I bring a tape deck and I listen to preaching, but sometimes the only radio we had in advance was the AM, so it was interesting what you would pick up on the AM station. Uh, focus on the family and then there was one program about UFOs and I was kind of weird I forget what the name of that one was I, I would listen to those two things and then there would be a commercial that would come on and for such amount of money you can have a star name for yourself or for a loved one how about giving the gift to your loved one by naming a star after, and you get this little picture of your star and ID and, and it gets registered the star registry of, of the name. No, it does not. Plus my Bible says, my King James Bible says that God has a name for all the stars. And he knows how many there are. But, you know, in Genesis the creation that in 5 8 you know, he God done this great splendor. Let there be, and then it says, and the stars also. I'm like, but no, yeah, God made them too. You know, you make this great ice cream sundae. Oh, you got the ice cream, you got the hot bud, and you got the whipped cream, and you put the cherry on the top. Oh, yummy. Here's some sprinkles. You know, recently, it's been a while since I've heard any message in a church, Baptist church, the ones I've been in, and I have, really haven't heard a message about the Creator God. It'd be something interesting to talk about, to study about. That strengthens the spoil against the strong. Spoil is something you take when you win a battle. You know, when they found King Saul and his sons dead in battle, they chopped off their heads. They took their armor. They took the, the weapons they had, any coins they had on them. And what they would do is they go out in the battlefield and they... There are, today, there are German guns taken by soldiers from World War II and World War I. They took it off a dead German soldier. It's a spoil. It's a souvenir. Strong as those who won. So that the spoil shall come against the fortress. All combat. 
No, we're the mighty strong nation. And yet God had in Israel's history, the whole world has been over and over and over against more forces, more horses, more tanks, more airplanes, more men than Israel had. And Israel kicked their butt over and over and over. Not now. They hate him that rebuke is in the gate. They're just street preacher. When I preached at the farmer's market, they hated him. They abhor, they extremely hate him that speaketh upright. Oh, the, the things that Stiley writes on Facebook. Ah! I wish he'd knock it off, one preacher told me. You gotta stop you from putting things on Facebook. And I just posted before now. Before we started. Those that get angry at my post, those that get angry at the truth. Guilty! Why would you get angry? You know, some of these church music, this is absolutely ho horrible and, and, and devilish. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, you know, I, I've heard some of that stuff. Yeah, it's true. Who does he think he is? I can't believe you would write something like that. we got to have some of the traditional hymns with an upbeat. we got to have karaoke. Karaoke songs in the church. You say, what's that? We put a CD down and we bebop and sing to the CD because we're too lazy to learn instruments. I remember when I was early Christian, when people came in the church, they brought their instruments in. They learned how to play an instrument for God. I remember some that they were in the process of learning the good. I rather have you make a mistake on the guitar and you learn to sing to the Lord than the crap that's on a CD being played out in the church today. Drums and, and jazz and filthiness. Angels in heaven walking around. Oh, we're not hear that poor God. That sure don't sound like holy, holy, holy. Ah, the church music today is baloney, baloney, baloney. For as much, therefore, as your treading is upon the poor, you're walking all over the poor. You're, tramp, you're stepping on, you're, you're hurting them, you're, you're killing them. He gets a dollar and you take five. It's so funny, the southern state, you know, they got the flag, don't tread on me, and it's a snake coiled up. Of all the animals you choose, you chose the serpent. Don't tread on me. You did not read Genesis 3. You're supposed to be below the Bible belt. I tell you, you know, you learned about below the Bible belt. Don't come into Florida. You went too far. Ain't nothing Bible in this state. You can't even start a King James Bible believing church. I know. I tried to start two down here. And you take from him the burden of wheat. You know, it's, it, it takes a lot to grow wheat. It's Heavy to carry wheat. You know, the sheaves. You have built houses of huge stone. Expensive. Hard work. Imitation of the temple in Jerusalem. Takes a lot of work to build a stone house. Especially the old-fashioned way. But ye shall not dwell in them. <laughs> They're going to be empty. Go over there now. Go over to some area in Bethel and you, you may find some of those houses. Nobody's dwelling in them. Archaeology's digging them out. And, oh, yeah. They had a wine cellar. 
They had an area for for wheat. And they even had an area for the animal. <laughs> well, where's the occupant? Dead. Gone. He had planted pleasant vineyards. Ooh, the best. But ye shall not drink the wine of them. Well, the Assyrians are going to come. And they'll drink. Does this not sound like Jeremiah preaching to Judah? And you know, it's funny, Amos is preaching before Jeremiah. He's preaching to Israel that go in captivity before Judah goes into captivity. This is the same thing that Jeremiah is preaching, and Judah didn't learn Israel's lesson. Judah should have taken Jeremiah's preaching and with Amos's preaching say, Oh boy. I'm going to make up some Jewish names here, but hey, Jacob. I don't mean Jacob's Bob. Hey, Jacob, we, we got to have a talk. What? You know our brethren in Isaac and all that that were up in Israel north, the golden calves? North? Yes. You know the Assyrian army came down and took all our brethren away because they sinned against God? Yes. And we got this man Jeremiah here preaching. Yes. I think we should take the Queen of Heaven and throw her in the garbage can and bring back the God of Heaven. No. Don't you think we should be listening to Jeremiah? Maybe like they should have listened to Amos? No. Honey, you want to get some more firewood? <laughs> Come on, kids. Get the dough and all that. But we we got to make the, the cakes. Don't know what I'm talking about. Go back through our Jeremiah study. Israel goes in captivity before Judah goes in captivity. Jeremiah warns Judah as Amos is warning Israel. For I know your manifold, and that means more. One goes in and three, five, seven, eight, twenty go out. You know, an example of a manifold would be. If you got one of them computer extension cords, and you got the little button you can turn on and off, you plug one into into the wall outlet, and you got like maybe six or eight outlets you can add to that. That's a manifold. Transgression. That's not good. And your mighty sin. You're not just sinning. Mighty sins. What are you going to do when you say, well, all sins are, you know, there's no degree of sin. When Amos 5.12 says, mighty sins. There it is. I mean, we've got the Ten Commandments. And we got a whole bunch of other little things. They afflict the just. Here's a person, he's living and doing right. And the thief steals from him. The adulterer has taken his spouse. The, the, the child sex fiend has violated his children. The man with, with a gun has shot him. I was walking down the street. I know they didn't have guns back then. He took a, the man with the spear speared him down the street. They take a bribe. Whew, that's the government of a man. They turn aside the poor. In the gate, now in the gate is your city hall, is your your judgment hall. All legal businesses, all transactions, all judgments were done at the gate of the city. 
An example of that would be found in Ruth chapter 4. From their right, that's just man, has a right. I've got right. Now, the just man is doing right. He's got rights. And for a bribe, the right becomes a wrong. And doing that, bribery, and calling evil good and good evil, is also added to their mighty sin. Friend, those are people in authority, because not anybody can stand in the gate and judge. Who I want to get in politics. I'd be careful what kind of civil service jobs I get. You know, uh, there are cops out there, they're bad cops. Not all. There are judges and there are bad judges. Not all. Therefore, the prudent shall keep silence in the time. Uh, I'm staying out of this. If it's none of my business, you can now let's apply this. For it is an evil time. You know, people say, "Oh, we are in evil time. We're in the bad time. Oh, there's never such a time as this." No, you're wrong. You're wrong. I mean, Amos, they didn't have guns, but they had spears and knives. We don't know what Cain used to kill his brother. We don't even know how argument that Cain got with his brother. Well, I mean, what if it was just, you know, what if he beat the living daylights out of Abel? We're not told. You know, we've got, to, you know, Jesus has got to be coming because, no, 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 no. There's, there's no prophecy for the rapture of the church. You are in Matthew, and Matthew is, a, is written to the Hebrews, not to the Christian. Get your Bible right. Correctly apply the Bible. Study. It's an evil time when evil is good and good is evil and... That goes all the way back to Noah's time. Seek good. Alright, so chapter 5 is we've been seeking God, seeking God, seeking God. Now, let's seek good. Some of your churches are not good, Christian. Seek good and not evil. You can take that, you can apply that to the Christian. Paul speaks about a good and an evil. It's too bad the lad to see in church age is not listening. God, Jesus, says about the lad to see in church age, you're not cold, you're not hot, you're walking down the middle of the road, you're lukewarm. You make me sick. Now we are in the Old Testament law, seek good and evil that you may live. In the Old Testament, and even up to the, the very book of Acts, you could have done something, and God... What was that husband and wife in the book of Acts? I forget the name. Peter said, did you really sell your land for so much? And the husband goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he's got a little purse amount of money. He lied. Peter said, why'd you lie to the Holy Spirit? Bam, he drops dead. Whoa. Honey Bye steps in about an hour later after she takes the money that they didn't give the apostles and went shopping at Bloomingburg or something. Hey, did you sell your land for so much? Your husband said... 
And she's hiding in her bags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bam! She drops dead. They go out to bury her next to her husband. Friend, if we had more of that in the church today, but we're not going to. Because we're living by faith. We're living by, you know, conscience. All that will be dealt with at the judgment seat of Christ. But even still, that there were laws in the law of Moses. Adultery. Murder. Treating your parents completely off-center. Seeing the nakedness of a family member you ought not to be seeing. You know, they talk about the preacher getting adultery, adultery, adultery. Yeah, there are other sins that you died that there was no offering. It even says in Leviticus, for much of sins, sins that you know you do because you want to do, and don't bring an offering. We've got those sins as Christians, don't we? You ever is there a sin in your life, and it's like you've done that sin, and you try to confess that sin to God's like, mm, I don't really mean it, do I, God? And there are times that sin in your life, it, it creeps up, it, it happens, you don't really want it, you did not desire it, and then you really, Lord God, I'm sorry. And today, to seek good is to seek Jesus on the cross. Don't seek a church, don't seek baptism. Don't try to be good. I let my light shine. No, that's not what Jesus said to the church. He said, go to the world and preach the gospel. So the Lord, Jehovah, all capitals, the God of hosts, all the stars, all the planets, all the mosquitoes. God's God of mosquitoes? Well, who made them? shall be with you if you seek good as ye have spoken. Well, wait a minute. Did you notice that? They are saying, hey, do good and God, God is with you. Evidently, 514 is, is, is saying to the fact is, you're not living with what you preach. While they're saying, let's seek good and not the evil, verse 12 says, their good is evil, and their evil is the good. They don't know what good is, and they don't know what evil is. Bam, 2012, 22, excuse me, 10 years off. There are people today, they play a video going bang, 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 bang. And they don't realize if I pick up a real gun, bang, 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 bang. Hey, they're falling down on the ground. That's real blood. What's going on here? They don't have in my video game. I, I just push reset. It'll re There's no reset in line. What do I do? I want to be just like that movie star. And they ruin their lives to be like that movie star. Well, she looks so happy. You know, you'd be surprised with some of your Hollywood actors. They say William Shatner, uh, Star Trek. What's he playing in Star Trek? William Shatner, he plays uh, Captain Jerk Clerk. They say he's argumentative and really hard to get along off this, the TV, scan, uh, TV cameras. Matter of fact, they say William Shatner in another Star Trek 
uh, actor. They had a lifelong feud. They say the one that 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 produced and directed the Passion. I can't think of his name. He had no problem doing Hollywood drug movies and drinking, and, but he could do a, a Roman Catholic Mary movie, not about Jesus. And they say off the camera that guy was anti-Semitic. <laughs> anti-Semitic making a movie about Jesus? You know, you're, you're a politician. You may think he's good, but that's in the limelight. And what Israel's doing is they don't know what evil is. They don't know what good is. So they have these sayings, and they don't even know what they're saying. I can do all things through Christ with strengthening me. King James. Stiley comes along and says, okay, dive off the, the Empire State Building hit the city below the street, have a bus run over here, and a thousand yellow cabs run over here, and then get up and have a Coca-Cola. I don't think so. You're going to die. No, I could do all things with Christ and strengthen me. See, you're taking a Bible verse, and you're taking it out of context. Let's build an ark in America. <laughs> Stiley says, book, chapter, verse number, please. Stiley, are you interested in going to the Holy Land? Yeah, I will, when Jesus takes me. I've had a pastor one time, he pleaded with me, and he said he would pay for my tickets. I said, I'm still not interested. Because I'm not going to have a Roman Catholic or I'm not going to have an Arabian tell me what the Bible they don't believe, the footprints of Jesus. Good and evil. Verse 15, hate the evil. Oh, that's not today. And love the good. If you don't know what evil is, and you don't know what love is, you don't know what good is, and you don't race to hate, and then you mess with, with history, and you rewrite history, and you change it for your color favor, establish judgment in the gate, okay? What are you going to do when you live in a world, not just a, a society, when you live in the world, it's all messed up. We have gay sodomite, that's not what they call it, pride June. Sodomite is a sin in the Bible. Pride is sin in the Bible. And there are churches, religions, that give them, oh, they're just great, so people, all are welcome here. You're sinners. And then when somebody like me comes up and witnesses to them, telling, hey, you know, you are involved in a gross, what, 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 what was the word up here? Great sin. How dare you? Oh, you, you offended me. That's, a, that's how those people are. There's something wrong with them because of their sin style they've chosen. And they lie. God loves us too. No, he don't. Maybe Satan, God. And you got this thing with these gun activists, Christian, Republican gun activists, and you tell them, well, guns kill. Oh, no, it doesn't. Well, what is firing the bullets?
President Biden. He's not my president. Oh, no. Uh, gas prices are because of him, and the toilet paper is because of him, and there's no formula because of Biden. What's 1 Timothy chapter 2 say? It says the will of God is for you to pray for your king and your leader. I wrote that to a preacher the other day. Uh, he was, he was, I said, listen, you are wrong, preacher. And people are still laughing at my comment. That guy's a preacher. I wouldn't listen to him worth a dime for a telephone call. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the raiment of Judah. They're not hating evil. They're not loving the good. Or else Assyria wouldn't be coming. They are not seeking good. And not avoiding evil. Else Assyria would not come. Friend, the problem with the world today is you're not seeking good and you're not fleeing evil. You're not hating the evil. You're not loving the good and you don't even know what good is. And you don't even know what evil is. And yes, not only am I speaking to the world, but I'm speaking to Christians, to Baptists who go to church. And one illustration I can give you is, I'm preaching on the streets. I'm preaching about the gospel of Jesus Christ. In my heart, I want lost people to be saved. I'm doing what the Bible commands me. This person walks in, well, I'm a Christian, and you're offending the people. You're turning people away. And I say to myself, quietly, not trying to raise an argument, you don't know your Bible. I have in my pre street preacher's Bible, I have laminated, it's Isaiah, one, it's a chapter in the verse, one, lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression. So, why are you so loud? I pull that out of my Bible and again hand it to them. Why do you do that? It's scriptural. It's biblical. They don't know that. They know about Easter and they know about Christmas and they don't even know the wrongness, they don't even know what their Bible is, how their Bible is, where their Bible came from. And today they don't even know church history. I'm not praying for the church on the records of Fox's Book of Modern. I'm not praying for the church that killed my brothers and sisters. Multiple ways. And I don't have the time and the resources to tell you all the ways they killed and tortured. But I can tell you one thing. There was a time called the Inquisition where a church killed Christians. I ain't praying for that church. I'm staying true to the King James Bible. And if God tells me it's evil, I, want, I don't want anything to do with it. And if God says it's good, I want to cling to it. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And I quoted that verse of that preacher the other day about ranking on the President of the United States. 